George. Oh, my God. Running for mayor of London, are we? Who are you? It doesn't matter who we are. What matters is our plan. <laughs> it's the Joker. No, George. It's your reckoning. <laughs> Smile to gender. <laughs> I'm here today with Mr. George Gallio. How is You're not the man I was expecting. Sorry, what? You're not the man I was expecting. Sorry, George. No, no, sorry, George. Sorry, George. I still hired help. <laughs> <laughs> so, Fiona, are you playing it, bro? Fiona, give us. He's an imposter. I was pretty sure he wasn't you. <laughs> hired help. Can't get the right help. With the... Can't get the right help. Yeah, that's it. Take all the stuff. Get out of here. <laughs> this is splendidly anarchic. <laughs> I wish I knew what that meant. <laughs>
um, is doing a good job? <laughs> Frankly, it's an insult that you should ask me that question. Uh, David Cameron is a posh boy, a phenomenally rich boy. He is not far from here earning half a million pounds for the renting out of his house whilst living free in Downing Street. He went to Eton, he went to Oxford. We know the kind of pigs games that he got up to at uh, Oxford. It's government for the rich by the rich uh, and there's no sense in which ordinary people have any say in all this. W the ordinary people are being made to pay the price for a, an economic crash that they had absolutely nothing to do with. Look, I know you want this. <laughs> <laughs> How are you going to please everyone? You can't please everyone, but there are some people who don't need a mayor. If you're rich already, you actually don't need a mayor. The people who need the mayor on their side are the ordinary people, the working people and the poor uh, who proliferate in London despite the views of many in the north of the country. There's more poor people within a four mile radius of the House of Commons in the Palace of Westminster than, than there is in the whole of Scotland or the whole of Wales. That's time, George. What does it mean to be British? It just means that you are living here. Uh, the British all came from somewhere. 53% of Londoners are from minority communities. Uh, they are here because we were there. We went to their countries and stole their things. And in the case of black people, even stole the people themselves as slaves. And uh, so uh, it's a kind of reparation, I, uh, I say, that they should be here. And uh, it's up to us to make sure that they are treated equally. This time, <clears throat> as you know, people have lost faith in politicians. Mm. You're a politician. Mm. Why should they believe in you? Well, I think they do. Everybody knows that I say what I mean and I mean what I say. They may hate what I say. They may hate what I mean. But they know that I mean it. And I wouldn't say it if I didn't. Since Tony Blair and the Iraq War, the British political class has been bankrupted of all credibility. So I'm the anti-politics candidate <laughs> in the mayoral uh, election. And anti-politics candidates are doing well. How do you deal with the haters? Well, haters are going to hate. Uh, if I know... That needs to be a meme. <laughs> uh, haters are going to hate. Uh, I, uh, you know, if I, if I can work out why they hate me, well, that's fine. I can pass swiftly on. Uh, so someone who has on their profile that they support Israel, it's going to hate me because I'm a big voice for the other side. Where I can't work out why they hate me, that sometimes causes you a moment or two's reflection and maybe introspection, maybe self-criticism. Uh, I just uh, treat it in the way a ship's captain treats the sea. It's just something that has to be gotten through. Okay. I like this question. What's the, f what's the funniest question a journalist has ever asked you? Oh my goodness, I'm not sure it's fit for publication <laughs> on a, a show like, uh, like yours. <laughs> um, I don't know, they're, they're usually very far from funny when they're interviewing me. Yeah. They're usually there with a dagger, uh, <laughs> looking for an opportunity to Guys plunge it uh, <laughs> in, into, into my heart. I need to think about that and come back to you. Okay, okay, okay. What would you like to have achieved when you were on your deathbed? <clears throat> Uh, my dearest wish would be that if not me, my sons, and mashallah, I have many children, would walk in a free Palestine. That's the thing I've been most associated with uh, almost all my life, more than 40 years now. I used to think I'd walk in a free Palestine. Now I'll settle for my sons, the youngest of whom is 20 months old. If they can do it, then I would think uh, my efforts had been worthwhile. Your most embarrassing moment? Uh, on Big Brother, um, in a leotard. Was it really that though? Everyone's always hyping up. Is it really that though? Uh, well, you know, I, I raised hundreds of thousands of pounds for Gaza, so it was uh, worth it to make a, a fool of myself for a moment. 
Uh, but it was pretty embarrassing while I was there. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people just want to know what George is about. Yeah. yeah. All right, yeah. he's running for mayor of London. Yeah. No one's going to bother reading through the whole pamphlet. No. No offense. No, no. Um, so your top three policies, just for any regular Joe like me, mm. um, who's just busy with our day to day to day lives, give us your top three policies that we should say. This is what George stands for. Free transport for students, school students, college students, university students will all travel free on London buses and the London Underground. I think that's a pretty important pledge. Uh, a police force that operates uh, entirely colour blind. Colour blind to the colour of the skin, colour blind to the colour of the shirt collar. In other words, chasing everyone with uh, equal energy and assiduity. Your uh, time's up, but I'm going to let you continue because you've only said one policy. Uh, well, that's two. Uh, one on transport, one on that's policing, and the other one would be on housing. There will be no housing development in London and uh, will be allowed to be built unless 50% of it is affordable housing because working class people are being socially, ethnically cleansed out of central London. If you were Prime Minister, what would you change if you could change what you could change, uh, if you had the power to change, <clears throat> what would be first on your agenda as Prime Minister, not as Mayor of London, as Prime Minister? To withdraw from all foreign wars and occupations of other people's countries. We can't keep our old age pensioners warm in the winter, but we can set fire to other people's countries all over the globe. Scrap nuclear weapons which can never be used and cost a hundred billion pounds and spend the money here at home and uh, legislate in the direction of equality. We'll never all be equal, but the direction of travel should always be towards equality. All right, George, you can stretch now. Is that it? No, now is where the questions actually begin. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> These are the quick-fire questions. You can't change. Those weren't quick-fire? The th 30 <laughs> seconds isn't quick-fire? Okay, George, quick fire questions now. Whatever comes into your head, say it. Yeah? <laughs> well, that could be dangerous if you're me. <laughs> okay. Good luck, George. <laughs> what did you want to be when you grew up? A footballer. What do you love and hate about the world? I hate injustice and I love people. Who is more handsome, you or me? Well, you're a pretty handsome guy, especially when you were wearing my hat. <laughs> One word to describe Donald Trump. A monster. Who is most important in your life? My wife. A message to the haters. Haters gonna hate. <laughs> uh, dogs bark, the caravan moves on. Favorite quote that inspires you on a daily basis? If you are not capable of trembling with indignation at any injustice anywhere, you are not a man. Your favorite book? It's difficult to come up with one. If I was on a desert island, I'd want the complete works of Shakespeare. Favorite color? Blue. Most admired person from history? Uh, Comandante Che Guevara. Best form of relaxation? Football. Best form of motivation? I wake up in the morning. I'm motivated. Famous country to go on holiday to? Morocco. Advice mm. to politicians, uh, people who want to be politicians? Be yourself and be true to yourself. Say what you mean, mean what you say. Describe yourself in three words. Tireless, committed, truthful. Who's George? I've been around a long time. Uh, I was born into politics. Uh, God willing, I'll die in politics. I'm with my boots still on. Now, George, uh, you've told us that you're going to do a lot of these things. Mm. Um, if we then meet you in about a year's time, mm. and then you set the guard dogs on us. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. But whatever happens, let's just say you do win, mm. and then you uh, falter on what you've said to us, mm. and then we pay you a visit. I'll have a town meeting every Saturday afternoon. So every Saturday afternoon, in one town hall of the 33 London boroughs, you'll find me. And you'll be able to say to me, why didn't you do that? So Boris Johnson has won once a year in the O2 that you've got to uh, apply for a ticket for, mm. everybody in London, every Saturday, will have the opportunity to come and question me. No, nice. gu no guard dogs. No guard and dogs. and I, I'll make a, a date with you now for the first 
return interview. I wish you the very best, guys. Thank obviously, you. Obviously, we're not plugging George, but uh, obviously, everyone should have the chance to speak, and you guys make the choice. Whoever you want to vote for, whatever you want to do, it's your lives, and obviously, we're giving everyone a platform to speak. Do what you gotta do <laughs> to get through. <laughs> what matters is the plan. Assalamu <laughs> right. alaikum. I'll take my hat off to you, <laughs> Do you watch Smile to Jenna? I've watched one. Be honest, George. Don't give me a politician. No, no, no. I, I have watched one. You're one on Islamophobia, which is legendary. It's absolutely brilliant. Legendary, George. It's legend. Is that a beard or is it stubborn? Beard. It's not a beard as magnificent as yours. I like wearing the kilts. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's because I know I have to picture it in my head. <laughs> but that's that's going too far. <laughs> Cut. <laughs> this is supposed to be an interrogation, George. Damn it, George! <laughs> nice. Very good, man. <laughs> Coming soon to a cinema near you. The killings of Tony Blair. Some people make a living. Others make a killing.